This time on Healthy Body, Healthy Mind. Living with a disease like multiple sclerosis can be unsettling, to say the least. I was feeling great. The girls were, in, you know, were there. Uh, life was good. But when that hit me, it hit me like uh, uh, bricks falling down my head. I guess it was hard to hear, and I think I was in sort of a state of denial. You know, Superman of a man. I was 28 at the time. Like. I'm healthy. They don't know what they're talking about. I just said, I have MS. And then we just like hugged each other. And he got home with Sam. <laughs> Major funding for Healthy Body, Healthy Mind provided by Sanofi Aventis. Throughout the world, every day, everywhere, working for what really matters, health. And by GlaxoSmithKline, improving the quality of human life by enabling people to do more, feel better, and live longer. Additional funding provided by Shire. and by Partridge Foundation. And by Burlex. Welcome to Healthy Body, Healthy Mind. I'm Carlos Pagan. There are few things as frightening as the prospect of losing control over one's body and in turn, one's independence. That's what makes a diagnosis of multiple sclerosis so devastating, the possibility that one day you might not be able to walk or hold things firmly in your hands. But treating MS has come a long way, and no matter how difficult MS becomes, coming to terms with the limitations it can bring is often the first step in maintaining a sense of control over its effects. And I think it's particularly stressful for younger patients. I mean, they're 22, and they were, you know, two weeks before, they were 10 feet tall and bulletproof, and now all of a sudden they have a chronic illness which could potentially cause disability. I think it's quite frightening. Each week, about 200 Americans are diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, an autoimmune disease where the body's immune system turns on itself and attacks the central nervous system. It's estimated that there are over 400,000 people with MS in the United States alone, and over 2.5 million people with MS worldwide. The central nervous system is the brain, the spinal cord, and the optic nerves. And it's traditionally a disease that has been thought to affect myelin. Myelin is the fatty substance that surrounds nerve fibers. You can think of it sort of like um, the insulation around an electric wire. When myelin, or the nerve fiber, is destroyed or damaged, the ability of the nerves to conduct electrical impulses to and from the brain is disrupted, and this produces the various symptoms of MS, the type and severity of which depends on the part of the central nervous system that's affected. MS is a disease that begins, as I said, somewhat randomly in the nervous system, and where it happens to begin for that individual obviously dictates what symptoms they're going to have. If it begins in the optic nerve, the person will experience diminished vision in one eye. If it begins in the part of the brain that controls movement of one side of the body, they'll present with paralysis or weakness on that side. If it uh, involves the sensory fibers, that will be numbness or tingling. If it's in the brain stem, it might be double vision or dizziness or something else. So it, it, it's very much individually based on exactly where that first attack happens. The individual nature of MS is as much a hallmark of the disease as its unpredictability. But there is one thing that probably everyone with the disease shares. The sense of devastation they feel when first diagnosed. And then he came in and he told me that I had multiple sclerosis and it was like the end of the world to me because I didn't really know anybody that had it. 
I didn't know what to expect. When the neurologist told me, it was all the, everything that I hoped that wasn't true came to fruition. Perhaps one of the most troubling things about MS is its unpredictability. The variation in day-to-day -day symptoms can often create its own tension. What's it like to live with such uncertainty? As we'll see, with determination, proper treatment, and a positive approach, life can go on as planned for many patients. Did you know that multiple sclerosis is likely to affect women two to three times more than men? While the reason for this phenomenon remains a mystery, many experts believe it might be caused by a combination of hormones unique to women and an immune system wired differently than a man's. For more information about multiple sclerosis, please visit our website at healthybodyhealthymind.com. Some say that in order to fully understand MS, you have to examine how people live with the disease. Correspondent Carlos Bain introduces us to three different patients, each dealing with their own unique case of MS. And though the uncertainty of the disease takes its toll, all three continue to face their journey with hope. For most people with multiple sclerosis, life becomes a roller coaster ride of ups and downs. Not only have they been diagnosed with a serious disease, many in the prime of life, but they have to learn how to deal with the unpredictable nature of it as well. I had a lot of ups and downs since then. But now I'm, I'm you know, I accept it more, I think. I think it's quite frightening, and I think the unpredictable nature of it is also quite frightening. They're always waiting for the next shoe to drop. Dr. Douglas Gooden is a practicing neurologist and the head of the University of California, San Francisco's Multiple Sclerosis Center. When's the next episode going to happen? When am I going to really develop disability? Will I be able to walk in five years? And it's very hard to predict in, in anybody. In general, most of us who enjoy good health can count on the fact with a reasonable degree of certainty that we're going to wake up the next day and, and things are going to be okay physically. Dr. Aaron Miller is a neurologist and the head of Mount Sinai's Multiple Sclerosis Center in New York City, as well as the chief medical officer for the National Multiple Sclerosis Society. An MS patient lives with the threat that on any given day, they may develop new symptoms that could impair their vision, could impair their ability to walk, their dexterity in their hands. So what causes MS? Is it due more to genetics or one's environment? If I answered either of those two questions, I'd simply book my tickets to Stockholm and <laughs> collect my Nobel Prize. The cause of MS is a tremendous mystery. Nothing there. And it's probably a, a complex so interaction nice between nice genetic nice factors nice and the environment. All, right? We know, particularly from twin studies, that identical twins, if one twin has MS, the other twin has about a 30% chance of developing MS. On the other hand, since identical twins share the exact genetic makeup, if this were purely a genetic disease, both twins would always have the disorder. One of those identical twins is Demetrius Baduris, a young man born and raised in New York City. In 1995, Demetrius was attending medical school with his identical twin. Both were sitting in a pathology class when Demetrius heard his professor say something that sounded very familiar. And he mentioned numbness in the feet. I'm thinking to myself, I have numbness in the feet. Tingling in the hands. Sounds yeah, that's kind of what I have. And, you know, uh, loss of balance. I'm thinking to myself, I have loss of balance. And I whisper to my brother, I go, these are the symptoms I have. And he goes, you're crazy. Demetrius soon learned that he had multiple sclerosis. When I was told, couldn't stop crying. 